Hi guys, this is Zizi here from Diagonal Coaching and today we've got another position of the day. Today's position is position with episode number 14 and we've got a pretty tricky double ones here. We are 31 pips down and well, many options, many, many options in front of us. So when you've got a difficult positions with literally 10 tens of options, how should you think about it? Well, let's go over the thinking process slowly. Pause the video if you want to think about it as I'm going to share the explanation now. Uh, looking at these double ones, uh, we need to realize few things. Some fundamental, some we can use some implications and easy simple logic to uh, to figure out. So first, uh, what pops to my mind, let's focus on the 22, 22 point checker, checker on the 22 point, since that can be moved and that looks like a big deal. So the question is, do we want to move the checker on the 22 or do we not? Well, um, since we are 30 pips behind in the race, uh, the checker in fundamental analysis strongly benefits us to be there. I mean, if we just move it to the 20, well, opponent can do anything he wants. He will just play behind us. We will never ever give him any bad rolls. So not a good thing to do. So we want to stay there. We want to wait there because now suddenly, well, opponent will have some troubles. We will cause him the troubles. So we definitely stay on the 22 point now. So we figured this out. But well, huh? Um, do we have any other option? I mean, how could we play? Well, then if we are staying on 22, we cannot play from the 20. Then well, from the tw from the 13 point, there there is an option to play. So let's see how. Well, uh, we could make a 10 point, for example, and then the last one kind of missing, I mean, what should we do, like 4 to 3 or something, but I mean, if we play 4 to 3, well, then he's just gonna escape, not be that afraid of our board, so I'd also prefer to keep the board for that reason. Well, there's one more thing to notice and to realize here. Um, he got two blocks in his board, which he can't really cover that simply, I mean, uh, if we leave a shot somewhere, then, okay, even if he hits it, let's say, okay, four, let's say he would have this position, well, he would be hitting us with a one, so the position would be basically this, and even if he covers somehow one of the checkers, well, then he will have two blots over here, so it's kind of difficult to, for him to hit us, and that's the crucial thing to realize. Since now, if we realize that we don't care about getting hit because probably we are not getting hit, well, bingo, then we've got, we've advanced to the final step of our thinking. We don't care about leaving shots because we will not get the hit, except maybe like double ones or something. So, we just need to have in mind what's the most efficient way how to play these double ones. What do we want to accomplish? And, well, it should be pretty simple here since fundamentally we want to keep our board. We want to have a strong board, not keep the board in this way. But um, we want to maintain the strength and power of our board, possibly we want to have some options how to create a third, I mean, how to make five point board, how to even improve our board. And well, so let's go over some options. So we know we are not going to play 13 10. Uh, so what can we do? Well, we could play something like five to three twice, something like this, which I don't really hate, but it weakens our board and it's going to be kind of difficult to make the five point now. So let's move 13 to 12 with one, 12 to 11 with one, 
where I don't care about leaving those shots as, uh, as I said many times and also having checkers split and not having them like this at one point will give us a good flexibility to build points, build these inner points later. So actually 1311 and now the also kind of a tricky nice part what we can do is to switch this. Uh, this point, four point to three point, because now, well, we will be slotting the four point with any six or any seven. We can make it kind of easily after slotting it. So this looks like an efficient play. And let's look at the analysis. Let's just do a few first rolls. Um, yeah. So this would be the idea, second best, I mean, second best move, as we can see, is this just maintaining these two checkers so he can escape that easily. We, this is basically the way how we want to win. We either want to catch him when he's leaving this kind of anchor or this kind of point, this kind of point, or then, well, we want to stay back as like an insurance or cause him a little bit trouble. So he's got some ugly rolls to make so yeah we can see that everything was in the um on basically the same idea based on the same idea so yeah it would be a mistake i'm just i mean i already made it on plus plus once but maybe now it would lag the video so i'm just gonna show you and go like this maybe over your play if you want to see yeah you don't want to weaken your board to play two to one that's not an idea as well you definitely don't want to step up with the back checker either. Yeah, this is just super inflexible, just kind of lets him do anything. So keeping the board strong, keeping it powerful, be ready to get some shots. And as people say, maximize contact, right? So yeah, I uh, hope there was already your play. I don't, I'm not going to scroll it down to the, down to the end. Uh, so yeah, I hope this was clear, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you with another episode of the day soon. See you, have a good day. If you enjoy learning about backgammon, watching backgammon, we upload videos every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday. Make sure to subscribe so you will not miss any of our content. And remember, when you think there is nothing else coming up, there's always something coming up.